Welcome to The Drive on ESPN Blacksburg, AM 1430, 810, FM 94.1, and live on the web at ESPNBlacksburg.com. It's The Drive on ESPN Blacksburg, and a good evening to all of you. I'm Paul Van Wagner. That guy is the 2016 Pokemon Go Regional Champion, KG. Not I. No? I think he's on the phone, though. Is he? You Jason. think so? Yeah. I heard a rumor that Jason Stam was petitioning uh, scouts to change their camp name to the Pokemon Go <laughs> Scouts.com football camp. Jason Stam, any truth to that rumor, sir? Totally untrue, Paul. Oh. I, I've not gotten behind. I'm one of the very, I seem like the few that hasn't just like obsessed about Pokemon Go. So, no, I, that is totally false. I'm going to throw it out there, man. Other than in a joking manner here on the air, you are part of the majority with this group. We are uh, we are three strong in the no say no to Pokemon Go uh, <laughs> crew here. Oh, yeah, I, I just action. can't get over, man. I, I just didn't think it was going to catch on like this bad. I mean, and it's, it's ridiculous. People are getting robbed as a result, <laughs> and they're know. having traffic wrecks. Like, it's just one thing after another. My my concern is when do players start decommitting because of because they just want to play Pokemon Go. Like, that's that's my big concern. Because, again, you know, we're dealing with 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. So. <laughs> a little... Well, I, I, I think it's safe to say, Paul, that that would be the sound of the apocalypse <laughs> when that happens. <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. Um, we're going to have Pete Morris joining us uh, later on today uh, to talk about this from a Virginia Tech standpoint. But I want to talk to you about this from a recruiting standpoint. Uh, big news out of uh, Hokie Nation. Uh, Coach Buzz Williams has signed on to a contract extension. I believe it takes him to through 2022-23 season, if, if memory serves. Um, but that is huge for Virginia Tech, especially – when you look at kids coming up wanting to play for Buzz, wanting to play in that system, man, that's that's good news for the Hokies, isn't it? Oh, it's great news. Yeah, I mean, they extend another, uh, I believe it was two years onto his current deal. Um, but, yeah, continuity, stability, that's what you are, you know, purveying, I guess, by doing that, by signing Buzz on. So now he can go and it gives him even more, you know, clout to, to sell these guys on this yeah. program to say, hey, I'm going to be around for a while. I'm going to be here the entire way, or your entire time mm -hmm. in Blackbird. I'm going to be your coach. Like, you know, assistants come and go, but Buzz is staying. And so, just from a stability standpoint, and I mean, you know, it's not just the recruits, it's the parents right. that also can think, man, I cannot have to worry about my child going off to school here. And then this, mm -hmm. this same coach is going to be here. He's going to take care of my son. So, right. Yeah, it's a huge, huge deal um, just from that standpoint. It also kind of um, at least should lessen some of these rumors that, you know, Buzz Williams is in the mix for other jobs. Um, you know, that's just a sign of a good coach. When right. you're good, people want people want you. I mean, same thing with Whit Babcock. I mean, when you're good at what you do, people want you. Mm -hmm. So now it should lessen that. It should allow him to do what he does, which is recruit, coach, and, you know, network and, and do what he does on and off the court. Yeah, absolutely. So you spent uh, last week, we talked to you last Wednesday, and you were at one camp uh, in Charlotte, and then you went on to another camp, uh, both basketball-related. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you saw now, and were there any uh, any, represent, re any representatives from Virginia Tech, and did anybody uh, get a good look or, or make a good showing? Yeah, last week was the first week of the open evaluation period. Now, they had a couple of days off, and they get back going. They have another second evaluation period this weekend. Um, it's been the same thing, a couple of days off, and they get one final evaluation period next next week. So last week, yeah, I started out at Under Armour, the Under Armour All-American Camp in Charlotte. Um, that, I, I think, is probably the of the camps going on last week and of the, the tournaments going on, that was probably the biggest one as far as Virginia Tech is concerned. Okay. Um, they had their uh, commit that was there, Nikel Alexander-Walker, who that guy is impressive. I mean, mm -hmm. he led the entire camp. I believe it was about 85 kids in scoring. Um, they all played four games. He averaged, I believe it was about 21 points a game. Oh. Um, I mean, I'm just thoroughly impressed with Nikel Alexander-Walker. That, that guy is looking more and more like, you know, somebody who can be that that scorer to, to really carry the load. Now, when I saw him last year, 
and I thought he was good, but mm-hmm. I thought he was more of a secondary guy. And after seeing him this year, he's gotten so much better. Um, he can be a guy, I think, that can, again, like I said, carry the load. So uh, can be that primary scoring option. But also at that camp, you had Raekwon Gray, who I know he's been working on, um, especially uh, Najee Marshall, C.J. Roberts. C.J. Roberts had an unbelievable camp. I mean, he played his butt off is mm-hmm. probably a good way, is the best way to put it. I mean, he's not the tallest guy out there. I think he's about 5'10", 5'11", but he played his butt off. So very impressive guy. He knew how to get to the basket. He got other guys involved. Um, looking like a pretty solid point guard and somebody I think we have vastly underranked at three stars. So oh. I expect that to change somewhere down the line. Um, then I went down to Peach Jam. Uh, and at Peach Jam, they've also got uh, quite a few they're looking at. J.J. Chandler, uh, Devontae Schuler. Um, you got you know a lot of guys that are, are, are looking at Virginia Tech or that they're really keeping close tabs on. Fadion Flag was another one. Um, I think the coaches pretty well bounced around. I don't think they were all in, in – you know, more than one spot for more than one day, I think. Uh, I know Jamie McNeely and, and Steve Rockefort were down at Under Armour on Wednesday. Uh, Buzz Williams was there on Thursday, and then I know they moved around. They were at uh, Adidas in Spartanburg for the Adidas Nations. Then uh, they went over to Myrtle Beach for a tournament, and then I know a couple of them went out to Kansas for some junior college stuff. So oh, wow. okay. they're even getting the junior college stuff involved right now. So it is a very, very busy time. Um, they've got quite a few guys on their wish list, and we've kind of uh, gone through and, and ranked, or not ranked, but we've listed all the guys that they're looking at pretty high on their board right now in our in our latest war room. And um, Seriously, from these tournaments, there's been some more offers even that have gone out also. So let me ask you this. Going to JUCO camps or to JUCO tournaments, does that lead you to believe that they expect players to maybe depart early, whether it be to transfer out or or, or maybe oh, I, I don't know that there's any guys that maybe are going to make an early jump to the pros, but maybe to transfer out, is that a sign of things that they see possibly to come, or are they just looking at guys that maybe need to fill a roster spot? I think they're just looking at guys right now. I mean, okay. you know, we, we've talked about before the success that Buzz Williams has had in, on the junior college, uh, or, you know, getting junior college guys to right. come up. You know, he's had a few, whether it be Jay Crowder or Marquette, you know, that have gone on and do bigger things uh, playing in the league. Yeah. So he's had some success with these JUCO guys, and I think this is just him. He's got a lot of connections. This is just the staff keeping tabs on these guys, and, you know, I don't think there's any – it. it Preferably, they, they've got other high school guys they'd rather have. You'd rather have sure. those guys to bring along for four, or you know, multiple years mm-hmm. in the hope. Mm-hmm. But you always want to keep some other guys as kind of a option B, option C, um, should you get around in the spring and you're needing some players. Maybe you do have somebody transfer. So I don't think they're expecting anybody right now, but you know, they need to. You can't wait till you need somebody to, to you know go out and look at. You've got to already be ready and um, at least kind of know what's out there. Um, and so they're they're keeping a, at least an eye on some JUCO guys. Yeah. None of those guys are, are top uh, targets right now. I got you. Okay, so I've got so many follow up questions from just a little while ago, and I guess I'm just going to start at the top. You had mentioned that there's three <laughs> evaluation periods. Uh, the first one they, they that they just kind of went through a little break. Now they'll start the second one. So how many of these kids do you anticipate will attend camps at all of these evaluation? Uh, periods, or is it kind of one of those deals where the, a certain group will go, and then another group will go, and then a third group will go? How does that work? Yeah, no, anybody who's anybody is going to be at, at all three of these evaluation periods. Okay. I mean, um, it's pretty much anybody who plays AAU. Uh, okay. And the Peach Jam, you had to qualify for it. So it was the top, um, I'm trying to think, I believe it was like 16 teams that okay. were at the Peach Jam, and that, they also had 17 under, 16 under, 15 under. So there's that many teams. They had four gyms going on all throughout the day with games. And, you know, some of these teams would play two and three times a day sure. down there. So um, then you had uh, another one called the Peach Pit, which was kind of like a – I didn't go over to that one, but it was a lot of the teams who didn't qualify for the Peach Jam okay. were at the Peach Pit. So you had guys like, uh, you know, Boo, like Matt, Matt Coleman and the, the Boo Williams squad. They mm-hmm. didn't qualify. They're, that's a pretty big, well-known – group here in Virginia, over in uh, Hampton, Virginia Beach area, mm-hmm. they didn't qualify for Peach Jam, so they played in the Peach Pit. So a lot of coaches, I know we're going over there, but yeah, between, you know, the Augusta, I guess it was Augusta, Georgia, North Augusta, South Carolina, 
Um, that was all the Nike guys. And so a lot of it okay. was just separated by shoe company. Yeah. And you had, and you had Under, Armour, Under Armour guys in Charlotte, Adidas and Spartanburg. Nike guys were down in Augusta and North Augusta. So it, I don't think it was, it was pretty much everybody in on those circuits. KG and I want to know. KG and I want to know where's the Chuck Taylor circuit. When do we? Because we we think we can we think we can play in the Chuck <laughs> Taylor circuit. We got some Converse All Stars that we're rocking here. Yeah, I think he missed that boat by about ten fifteen years. Dang, dang. Uh, you mentioned Alexander Walker. Uh, where is he? At, and being a, a just a scorer and, and impressing. Where do you slate him to play? Like, is he a one, a two? Like, what what position do you have him at? He's a combo guard. He's okay. a guy I think that, that would be a true two, mm-hmm. uh, but could play the one if you needed. Um, now again, you've got guys like you know Justin Robinson and um, some other guys at point, but and they'd like to get another true point. I mean, that's one of the, the goals in this class. They still right. want to get a true point and a true big. So they'd like to um, you know have somebody that can do that. But it's also nice you know, if, if you you know. It looked to kind of look at the guys that Buzz Williams has gotten. He likes some versatility. He likes to be able to mix and match lineups. So you know, because Alexander Walker is a little bigger, let's say you want to, you want a bigger lineup. Mm-hmm. So you get with a bigger, he'd be a more of a bigger ball handler. And I think gotcha. he can, you know, I, ideally you like him to be a guy that can um, come off screens and um, be able to drive in the lane off of off of a screen or something. But he can bring the ball up if need be. And then C.J. Roberts, you mentioned him as a three-star, and you thought that he was vastly underrated at a three-star. So I'm going to ask you probably a three-point question here since there's three stars. First first question, what does he have to do as far as scouts.com is concerned to move up to a four-star? What are the criteria to get to, get to that next level? Yeah, I mean, I think we've talked about this a little bit before, Paul, as far as our, our ranking stuff goes. Mm-hmm. You know, five-stars are the ones – as far as basketball is concerned, these are the ones we see as like they right now they look like lottery picks right, in the NBA right. draft. Yep. They're very very close. Four star kid, you know that's a guy who you look at and you say, man, this guy's probably an all conference player. Mm-hmm. So you know, three star is is definitely a, a, a solid contributor, a good D one player. Uh, and then you know I don't, we don't do too many two and, and one star. You just kind of you know you know three star, four star, five star, typically right. what you are, but. Right. Two star would be, you know, you're definitely a D one player, but um, you know, you're probably going to be riding the bench a little bit and kind of sure. being a, a more of a role guy. Um, but yeah, you know, to get up there, I mean, he's just got to keep playing like he has. I mean, okay. I think a lot of it has to do with he's a little undersized. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, five ten is not the biggest size for a um, on the basketball court, right. so um, he'd be a little bigger if he was playing football. But um, yeah, it's not a big, not a huge guy. Uh, he's got quite a few other offers, but. Just, uh, I think the size is probably one of the biggest things that's held him back. But, yeah, if he, if he plays like he did, like I saw him in Under Armour, I think he's going to prove that um, size is, is definitely isn't uh, you know, something that can you know be used against him. And I think I've asked you this question before, and you probably already answered it, but I'm going to ask again because I can't even remember what I had for lunch, much less what we've talked about over the course of the last se- uh, seven months. Are there a set number of five star, a set number of four star, a set number of three star guys, or does it year to year vary vastly? Yeah, it's it's roughly about the same. Typically, you don't have more than about thirty five stars. Okay, uh, it's usually in between about twenty and thirty, um, probably closer to twenty five. As far as four star guys, again, there's a lot of confidence, a lot of um, all conference teams. That's mm-hmm. why you've got more four star guys. So mm-hmm. You've probably got. Um, you know, a hundred four star guys, maybe a couple more, but usually in that area and then um three stars kind of after that. So right. um yeah, it, it does vary. Sometimes you're gonna have more guys that are um you know, up and down. I know even twenty eighteen, uh, our our scout, you know, our analysts that do the rankings haven't seen too many guys um that they really loved. Um as far as you know, our Scout one hundred came out. There's a few at the end at the bottom there in the nineties who are three stars. Mm-hmm. You don't typically see somebody as a three star guy in the top one hundred in the country. So that's just because nobody's really stood out enough that, that they feel like it's earned that four star ranking, but but it will. And then when the next rankings come out, especially at this evaluation period, uh, I think I don't think there'll be any three star guys in the, at least for twenty eighteen in the in the Scout one hundred. One more quick question for you before I let you get out of here. Football related. Uh Michael Clark posted on your Twitter feed uh that offers are starting to pile up for four star North Carolina wide receiver Trey Turner. I think the Hokies are in the mix for Turner. 
right now at this point? Is there is it something that we can even talk about, or or are we too far out with Trey? You know, Trey's one that we definitely want to watch for the next uh, couple of years. He's got a younger teammate, Cameron Cloud, who I also don't want to, you want to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Northwest Guilford, I mean, it was like they're probably a, a pretty formidable group for the next few years. Trey, actually, I watched him. He was also playing basketball on the Peach Jam okay. um, this weekend, too. So he's he's, he's an athlete. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's playing basketball and football at pretty high level. But, yeah, it's it's still pretty early. Uh, Miami was probably the newest one to come in. But uh, I know North Carolina and Virginia Tech are probably the two that have been on him the heaviest. Sure. Um, you know, obviously, uh, he, he didn't he didn't, uh, doesn't go to the same school as, as Mook Reynolds, but – I know he knows Mook pretty well, and I think that helps Virginia Tech to have some guys from the Greensboro area and um, you know some familiarity with him. But also, you got the in-state North Carolina is on a pretty good roll right now. So yeah. uh, I do think it's early. He's still going to take a lot of visits, um, but definitely one that they're in pretty good shape with right now. Jason Stam is with Scouts. dot com in the VT zone. Stay strong on the no Pokemon thing. All right, brother. No, I'm hanging in there, Paul. <laughs> I'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Take care. There you go, Jason Stam, scout.com, the VT Zone. Appreciate his time. We'll take a quick break when we come back. Pete Morris is going to join us at the bottom of the hour. Plus, we still got to talk about the Open Championship. I've got NA- NBA, NHL, uh, KG. I got more. We might have to do a third hour today. That's fine. All right, we'll be right back. It's the drive. <laughs> Carrying the message to other sports junkies. <laughs> Sports junkies. Sports junkies.